Shalom, I'd like to say our praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai. Double honors to the Apostle of Great Millstone. My name's Connor Walk from Great Millstone, Toronto. Doing a lesson here. Um, this is in regards to the Wolof people. You know, um, they're a tribe located in um, Senegal, the Gambia, and Mauritania. What inspired me to do this lesson? I was watching a documentary on Marit Mauritania. You know, that's one of the poorest countries in the world and um, where there's still an ongoing slave trade to this day. And what I discovered, um, I already saw, like, you know, I already um, did some research and stuff on them. But, you know, but uh, the mo most I really opened up my eyes, you know, to certain things, you know, um, you know, make me uh, basically I'm going to read you some history going into them but um what i'm basically gonna say yeah basically these people they converted to islam but prior to islam you know they're israelites and some of them they kept um their traditions because they knew who they were some of them they they only converted um you know under disguise you know or for a certain uh, alliance you know with the Arabs at th that time, you know, for certain, cause uh back then um during the after the seventh um after the sixth century, you know, so to speak, that's when Islam, you know, Islam came on the scene during like the six hundreds, and then uh, it spread like wildfire throughout North, Central, and West Africa, you know, even the East, you know, and um. You know, a lot of uh, the Arabs, they were uh, killing whole tribes of our people, man. Forcing them to convert by the sword, which uh, the word Islam means submit. Which any one of our people calling yourself Muslim or Islam, you guys are dumb. Because yet these people are our enemies who killed our ancestors and helped build slave ships and sold us into slavery, man. It says, uh, their early history is unclear and based on oral traditions that will link... The Wolof to the Almoravids, the Almo Almoravids, which they were uh, Moors, who uh, you know invaded Spain, proving that the Moors were Israelites, you know, or uh, so-called dark-skinned people. The earliest documented mention of the Wolof is found in the records of the 15th century Portuguese finance Italian traveler Alvise Cadamasto, who mentioned well-established Islamic Wolof chiefs advised by Muslim councils and diviners. The Wolof belonged to the medieval era Wolof Empire of Senegambia region. You know, and you could do some more research on this these people here. But I'm gonna show you some of their war costumes, man. You know, which proves that they're Israelites. You know? Yeah, so when you go on the page, this is something what I had to screenshot, you know? But when you go when you're on that Wikipedia page, it says the Wolof people traditional culture and practice have survived in the colonial era and are a strong element of Senegalese culture. So a lot of people in Senegal and these countries, Mauritania, Gambia, all throughout West Africa, they still practice their Hebrew culture or they're still aware of that Hebrew element. In their bloodline some of them you know like they didn't forget and you can see what he's wearing here man he's wearing uh, the phylacteries man he has his uh you know make me get that in the law Deuteronomy 6 and 8 you know and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand and they shall be as frontless between thy eyes and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates you know, and the frontless between the eyes, that's a token of the law, you know, and also a remembrance of the Passover. When you get um, Exodus 13, and um, you could read that whole chapter, but when you read from 13 down on all the way to the um, 16 verse, and shall be for a token of thine hand, and for a frontless between thy eyes. For by the strength of hand, the Lord had brought the forth out of Egypt. And we're in the time of the Passover now. 
the Passover is coming to end now. So that you know, like this is spiritual, man. You know, and that's what we used to wear as a token of the Lord's Passover and a token of the of Him giving us the law. You see, He has the ram's horn. He has his sword. You know, modern day sword, the gun. You know, the ram's horn. Um, you know, that was a, you know, like that's a war instrument. You know, that was us. You know, like that's something that we carried. You know, and that we blew. If there was danger surrounding us, man, you see, he has single braids. He's dark skin. You know. Let me get that. He's very dark skinned brother, man. And what does scripture say about Judah? He could be possibly a, a Judah, Benjamin, Levi, but we know he's of the house of Judah. No, because that's where Judah fled, you know, after 70 AD, fleeing from uh, Roman persecution, man. So, any of you guys who's calling yourself African and, oh, um, you go back to Egypt. You guys obviously don't study, man. And you guys are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So the information's out there. And it's getting plainer and plainer. Je Jeremiah 14 and 2. Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. So the word black, there it should be kadar, which means dark skin in the Hebrew. That's what it's translated as. It said the Jews mourneth. We're the ones in mourning, man. Who's mourning now throughout West Africa right now? Suffering poverty and stuff, man. Even though you have Jakes who's doing well over there. Like you have Jakes doing well over here, man. It's the same thing, but, you know, for the most part, our people are suffering, man. You know? Having to work dead-end jobs. Having to find, a, you know, just a, a means to survive. You know, a lot of the men over here now are fishermen. You know, like a, a lot of the poorer class, because they have a, a caste system there. You know, they're, uh, you know, they're fishermen, you know. A lot of them can't but swim. They're forced to be fishermen, drowning in the water and stuff, man. You know, being sold off as slaves, you know, as uh, everyone being sold off as concubines and all these things, man. You know, all, st all kinds of stuff that the news isn't, isn't reported, man. The same things happen here as well, man. You see here, man, this guy has on the breastplate. You know, he has on a Mitri, the breastplate, man. You know, he has, you look at the fringes, border of blue. You see that, man? He looks like a Levite. You know, so possibly like these brothers, they could be um, high priest Levites, man. Yeah, you see here. This they you know like seeing this um this reminds me of the scripture um, Exodus twenty eight and uh, one, and take unto the Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office even Aaron Nadab Abihu, or Abihu, Elizar, Ithamar Aaron's sons and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother. For glory and beauty, and thou shalt speak unto all that are wise hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And when these are the gar and these are the garments which they shall make a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, an embroidered coat, a mitri, and a girdle. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And this brother, you know, like he's wearing pretty much everything that I just read in verse 4. You know? He's wearing, uh, you know, he has a broided coat, the mitri, and so on and so on, man. You know? And they shall take gold, blue, purple, and scarlet, and fine linen. And they shall make the Make the ephod of gold and of blue and of purple and of scarlet and fine twine linen with cunning work. It shall have the two shoulder pieces therefore joined at the two edges thereof. So shall it be joined together. You see? And that's what's going on, man. You know? So everything what I'm describing now, you know, um, that's what this man, 
of the Wolof people. That's what he's wearing, man. This is what a painter. Or this been on display from uh, the guy who I believe uh, who painted this is Abby David Bolat. It says, uh, and the curious gold girdle of the ephod which is upon it shall be the same according to the work thereof, even of gold, of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twined linen. Thou shalt take two onyx stones and grave upon them the children, the name, grave upon them the name of the children of Israel. And I'm going to show you another picture, man. You know, and this is our woman, you know. Uh, she's supposed to be a righteous woman, you know. Covered up head to toe. You know, she's a priest's daughter. You know, this is a look at this right now. This is a Ashanti man, a lot of Ghana man. You know, a lot of you are Ghana or Ashanti man. So, a lot of Levites, you know, are all throughout West Coast Africa man. Very prominent out there. You know, and you modern day leave, you know, some of you Levites uh, here in the Western world are known as Haitians today. You know, Ashanti, priest with an effort. You could see he's, you know, uh, like this man here, he was with uh, Jesuit. The Jesuits, they infiltrated them. You know, they uh, came out to spy them out and stuff when you do the research. You know, he's with a uh, Jesuit on a boat, man. You know, showing him, basically teaching him about his origins and culture. Because, you know, uh, because that's what Esau does. He goes amongst our people and he studies us, man. You know, because he's a damn thief. He he betray he uh befriends you, then he stabs you in the back, man. That's why the scripture says uh never trust thy enemy, man. Because that's his uh ammo. Let me get that scripture. Uh, the scripture says to never trust thy enemy, man. Be take heed. Exit, uh, sorry, Sarah, Ecclesiastes 12 and 10. Never tr trust thy enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouch and yet take good heed and beware of him, yet thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. Because that's what Esau does. He, comes, um, he came amongst the native people here in Canada and the Americas. You know, and uh, the so-called is, uh, you know, he came amongst us and he uh, learned our ways. You know, he made us show show us where, oh, where we mine our gold, you know, our culture, you know, everything. You know, how we live and stuff. He stole everything and he killed us, man. He killed us, raped our woman in front of us. Commit all kinds of atrocities, man. You know, and they're going to pay. You know? So you see that? Yeah. So like what I'm saying, the, the Jesuit priests, they're with them. And which proves that um, that, the, the, that the Ashantis are Israelites. It's an Ashanti claim they are the dispersed. It says the man seated in is an Ashan Levite. The Ashanti claim they are dispersed descendants of the biblical inhabitants of Ashan, which you read Joshua 19 and 7 and so on. These are cities of the tribe of Levi, you know, so that proves further on what I'm saying. As well as you have, um, you know, all throughout um, West Africa, you know, there is a region known as uh, the Slave Coast or Fort Judah. Fort Judah, man. You know, then you had Fort Benjamin and so on, you know, because the Jews, the house of Judah was scattered all throughout West Africa, North Africa, you know, but pre predominantly West Africa and North Africa as well, throughout the Sudan and stuff. Yeah, man. You know, but with that, you know, that was just a quick, um, you know, lesson, just going into the um, Israelites scattered throughout West Africa, further proving that we're the Israelites, you know. And uh, with that, I'd like to say all praise to Yahweh Hashem Yashai, you know, the water for opening up our eyes to this information and double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone amongst whom I learned the truth from. Double honors to the brothers out there doing the works in truth and sincerity. My name is Kanawak from GMS Toronto.
add it again. Like to say, Kwam Nasha Allah and death and destruction to the other nations. Shalom.